Beneath the surface of the UK's soils lies a silent crisis, a slow decline in condition that threatens the foundation of our food system. Climate change is leading to more volatile weather patterns, wetter winters and increased drought, adding pressure to food production and biodiversity. The growing regenerative farming movement is encouraging farmers to change their practices. But what can farmers do to improve the state of their soils? What will it take to revive them? Wadston Estate sits in the heart of Buckinghamshire, with its 6,000 acres having been managed using traditional agronomic principles for decades. However, in the last four years, the estate team have started adapting their practices to make their 3,200 acres of arable land more resilient. My name is Ollie Pemberton. I'm the farm manager here, so I look after all the arable cropping, all the livestock, and I'm also the agronomist for the farm. My name's Chris Leach. I've been working here on the estate for 20 years, and I am now Head of Sustainability and Conservation for the Rothschild Foundation. As an estate, we've got some pretty big environmental challenges. The global biodiversity decline is pretty well documented. We have in the past been quite a heavy cultivation farm, which has its results on our soil health. So our main challenge we're trying to solve now is building soil organic matters and building those soil fungal networks to support our crops. We've got a variety of soils here. Predominantly we're clay over chalk, with a fair depth of clay to be honest. So drainage is a big issue for us. And when they get wet, they stay wet. And when they get dry, they dry really quickly. And so we need to make them more resilient, which is a lot of the reason why we're going down this more regenerative path. Resilient soils will allow us to work them in better time and will allow us to rely on them. We're trying to make sure it hosts all the soil microbiome that are required. We're trying to ensure that the soil is cycling nutrients efficiently. We're trying to ensure that it's processing residues properly. By having the healthy soils, we can grow healthy crops. And when we get the soils functioning correctly and cycling nutrients correctly, we can start to step back away from the synthetic gravy train. Our key sustainability goals for Wadston are that we head towards net zero, that we reduce our impact as much as possible on the environment around us and that we continue to increase our biodiversity here on the estate. If we can get more organic matter into these soils, we make them more friable, we make them more workable, but we also make them more resilient. We make them able to tolerate large amounts of rainfall without flooding. We know that the organic matter means that in a drought, they hold on to that moisture for a little bit longer, and so we can sustain crops through periods of drought. Organic matter adds resilience. It also does a whole host of other things for the soil biology. To add this organic matter, Chris and Ollie looked to their natural resources, wood waste from the estate's woodlands and manure from the cattle operation. They began making compost on a scale large enough to impact the resilience of the estate's soils. I think we're lucky that we have a mixed farming system here but this can be done on a non-mixed farming system, just using grass. You could use grass as your nitrogen wood chip. You're gonna have some kind of carbon and nitrogen ratio on your farm. Just find it, utilize it. This is the main hub of our compost operation where all our ingredients are kept. So key ingredients into this is gonna be your cow muck coming out your cattle sheds. You want that as fresh as you can. That's going to make up about 60%. The next largest part is going to be your wood chip. That's going to make up about 30%, 35% of your material. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm balancing my carbon and my nitrogen contents. And then I'm going to add a very tiny amount of mineral into that mix because plants need minerals and you want your bacteria here to start breaking down that mineral in the compost so that it's ready for your plants when you put it out on the field. The carbon nitrogen ratio is really important because that is what's going to raise your temperature to a level where everything's going to decompose. Too much carbon, your temperature's not going to go up quick enough. 
too much nitrogen, your temperature is going to go up too fast and too high. It takes 50 days for this to be complete, so not that long at all. But during that 50 days, you will have to turn a certain amount of times because I need to get my temperature up to 65. About day 10, I'll turn again. Day 25, I'll turn again. And then day 50, we should be finished and it's ready to go on the field. So this is the machine we finally decided on. We trialed a few different ones, high-speed shredders, etc., wood chippers, but we found that this one twisted everything, so it will take anything up to eight inches in diameter, um, breaks it up nicely, and uh, it's also got weigh cells on it so we can really fine-tune our recipe. Everything's mixing round and pushing it forward, dropping back in, mixing round, pushing it forward, so it's on a nice rotation, so you get a really good uniform mix in there. I would always suggest in this machine that you put your wood chip in first or your big heavy brash in first because then that's going to act like a sandpaper and so any straw or other finer material that goes in afterwards it's going to start to really grind that down into a fine substance. If we didn't have the technology it would be very labour intensive to make enough compost to get on this volume of field. Farms shouldn't be afraid to invest because in the long run it's going to reduce the other kind of inputs that you have to put in so it's going to be a long-term sustainable saver economically and environmentally. So the benefit of putting this on the field we're not particularly looking at your organic matter content or I'm not what I'm looking at is my bacterial and my fungal content as a kickstarter to repairing our soils from the conventional system that we've been in over the years. Once we've blended all the ingredients together in our particular ratio, you'll end up with a mix like this. Very lumpy at the start, and we will want that to break down, and we want to mix that up a little bit more to get it to a stage where it will start heating up and decomposing. So you can imagine the, the water retention on this. It would be just like a sponge that would swell up and I'll just be holding water, which is exactly what you want, keeping that there. But then you can see that everything's going to be moving through there nice and nice and easily. So just putting this out of the compost heap there, you can see the, the very small thing, but the root depth on there already is, is really good. You can imagine what that would be like at a full grown plant, and that's just going to keep going down. And that's because of how porous that soil is. But one of the things people worry about is the wood chip in there and it's like oh it's going to take my nitrogen out but look what this is doing this root is literally going through the wood chip and pulling the nutrients out of that wood chip so the wood chip is so soft now it's penetrable and the roots are just pushing their way through it and actually using using that which is, which is great it's exactly what we want <laughs>